Thank you very much. So we like to start the next session. And the following presenters applied for the presentations, uh, presentation opportunities, and they were selected by the steering committee. So uh, the idea is to realize the dream and to become president in the future with Ruby. This next speaker, Mr. Noro, uh, is working to develop the young uh, programmers to be successful uh, with Ruby. So the two in the March of 2019, uh, he started uh, with the crowdfunding uh, to collect the fund, the 5.3 million yen, uh, to go to Rwanda to develop the uh, the professional programmers. So he's quite active to develop the young engineers in and outside Japan. So today he's going to talk about the programmer development method um, for the Ruby engineers, Ruby programmers. Uh, hello. Muraho is the language, uh, the meaning hello in Rwanda. And um, hello. Thank you. So I'd like to talk about uh, the engineer development, uh, the uh, programmer development, uh, rather, using Ruby. And the main idea is to provide opportunity to realize their dreams to young people. And I'd like to talk about what I have done so far and I'd like to do in the uh, future. And I appreciate the kind understanding. We had the program in Africa at present. So why did we decide to go to uh, Africa and what we are doing in Africa? So I'd like to report on our activities. So I really appreciate this opportunity to make presentation in front of you today. So first, I'd like to make introduction uh, focusing on what we did in Japan, what kind of uh, the talent development or educational program we did and what kind of challenges we faced and how we overcame all these challenges. And then I'd like to talk about our activities in Africa. And also, I'd like to introduce our learning system that made with Ruby. So the message I like to share with you is with Ruby, we can uh, the make make it happen, the make our dream come true. It's it did work for me, and also it's also applicable uh, for the students who came to our classes as well. So this is a message. So the dream come true with Ruby, and to make it possible. What did we do? So this is about myself. So the concept of the Ruby World Conference is bridging uh, the business suit and the t-shirt people. I have both. I worked as the research, uh, the sales rep. And then I joined an IT company and started the programming at the age of 29. So at the age of 29, I learned programming for the first time, and I learned it somehow. And then I became entrepreneur and I started my own company called Diving Code. So the one of my dream came come true when I set up this company. Uh, because one of my dream when I was a small boy was to become a president in the future. And I could become a president thanks to my encounter with Ruby. And I heard there was a shortage of engineer and I found some people who were looking for some engineer and I became one of those engineer and that is how I made a business and became president and then I set up the uh, the program uh, programming uh, the school in Africa and now uh, I'm nurturing some young programmers as well so and then what we try to do, the business concept, concept is to realize the society where everyone 
uh, can become an active member in society uh, with the uh, technology as their weapons. So one of the technology is programming. And we had to focus on the most challenging aspect. And there are two big biggest challenges. For one, programmer or programmer uh, engineer. So uh, in my talk, sometimes these two are used interchangeably. So the uh, in Africa in particular, the, uh, the this kind of opportunity to become an uh, engineer uh, was not available. And when we looked for an uh, aware this kind of needs was really strong, that perhaps that would be in Africa, because that's where the greatest potential was. In uh, talking about our uh, schools, perhaps this is the way I can describe. On the top of the uh, pyramid is web engineering course. So that's our main offering. And also there are some engineers and also there are some people who like to study to become engineer. So uh, anyhow, that's a very uh, professional content. And also this is about the business model. So the diving code, the school business, and also uh, the talent, uh, the matching the business. At present, the mostly we're focusing on the school. And we have one of the school in Tokyo. So students come to our school and then study our content. And we, uh, the staff, support them. What supporting means answering their questions and assessing their um, outputs and give some lessons. And also, we had an online learning program, uh, so we have online support as well. So we have some distant uh, the learning program as well. Another, uh, another business is to uh, uh, introduce the professional uh, to the companies uh, and looking for such professionals. So this educational programs, why well, I think many of you know, um, is very time consuming, and especially if you work for uh, some program developing com companies, you know, uh, developing a new programmer is very time consuming and their interest areas are different and also their personality will make a big influence on how quickly they will learn and how best they will learn. So this is something we found very challenging. And also, it requires a lot of people because, for example, one instructor cannot teach uh, many students at one uh, at the same time because it may require place, and also it might take a lot of time. And also, if you find some super uh, instructor for able to do this, what about the uh, the manpa? Uh, what about the payment? So in order to run this kind of business, we need to accumulate the knowledge, expertise, so we can provide a quality service, quality teaching service uh, in an efficient manner. And that is why, as written here, we found standardization is very important, and the second box, automation. So I'd like to talk about the specific examples of these. So this is our school. So the, uh, the best choice or the best scenario is the students can come and physically share their place and study together, um, if not online. But this kind of physical schooling uh, and face-to-face -face communication is quite important to elevate the motivation as well. So this would be the best scenario. And also, as I mentioned, 
in the education industry or programming school industry, there are many challenges. I would like to s cite three. For one, there are too many, too little schools existing at the same time. And the second point, the quality variation is too big and quite unstable. And number three, the difference of the qualities among the different schools is not very clear. So in our case, uh, we started small, and like we did, even if you're only one person, you can start this business. So starting is not not so difficult. Uh, but once you start, what kind of textbooks can you use? If you like to make your own textbook, it's not easy. And even if you can make your own textbook for your school, the next school may be doing the same. So the different, uh, different textbooks with the different qualities existing at the same time. And also the quality difference amongst the different schools, as I mentioned, it's hard to see unless you become the student. It's not clear from outside. So what I'm saying is for our industry, there are many challenges and we try to uh, overcome these challenges and try to improve the quality of our service and the focusing on the, uh, the nurturing talent and the finding efficient way, effective way to do that and duplicate the excellent models. Uh, so it's like a horizontal duplication. So here's what we have been doing. And I hope our experience is useful, especially if you're developing your own talents. So this is the model after receiving students. So first we use the, uh, the school operating manuals. And also as for the other mindsets, we have the morning, morning meeting and evening meeting and also uh, educational sessions. Uh, all these are for the staff. And also not just face-to-face -face instruction. Uh, we have uh, the system to support that. Uh, so we can capture the problems, challenges of the students at the early stage as possible and give the necessary feedback. So this kind of studies supporting system is necessary and this is a way we have built our own support system. And the one of the challenges for us to overcome was uh, to change the design of the course. In the 2016, I also came this Ruby World Conference and I gave the talk at that time as well. But at that time, mostly the part-time instructors were our main models. And that's the situation on the left-hand side. But the last year, we made a big change, and now we're focusing on a full-time. So there's a lots of difference. So uh, it's like um, the service lengths and also uh, the part-time vis-a-vis full-time, and also the payment. So there's a quite a big difference because this kind of change was necessary to improve the quality of uh, the graduate, uh, the students finishing our courses. So in order to focus on the quality, we wanted to improve the quality of our education program as well. And that is why we changed our courses last year, made a big change. And I'd like to talk about the result later. Uh, before talking about the result, I'd like to talk about standardization. Standardization concept is related to Kaizen concept or continuous improvement concept developed in Japan. So how the curriculum should be developed and how we should improve it. So uh, the Ministry of Education Japan uh, provides the uh, instruction guide guideline uh, to schools. We wanted to develop something similar uh, for our own school because when we started the a course or school, um, the manual was so um, 
so it's some, something like oh, the uh, the lay person. So I wanted to put all these bits and pieces I created together and complete uh, some uh, the manuals uh, to in, to keep improving the curriculum. But developing this kind of curriculum and developing supporting manual is not so easy, especially if you are also teaching yourself in a class. And also to improve our uh, activities, we started to do demonstration day. Uh, demonstration day is not profit making event. Every six months, uh, we provide this uh, the learning opportunity, and now we have about one hundred people coming. Though when we did this for the first time, only ten people or so came. So uh, demonstration day is for uh, working adults to come and see uh, what kind of programs we offer. So this is where they can see the new challenge uh, for them. And as for the priorities of the things we've done, so first, goal achievement, and set the goal and set the scope. And in order to do that, we need to have the original uh, textbook and also to use those textbooks Effectively, we need to have uh, the education mentors. And the textbook is really important, and also the methods. Uh, exploration is necessary for such method, like uh, this is uh, the methods available, and this is the argument you can use. And we need to have the developers who can develop these methods and official documents. And as for improving those documents and the methods, we have to keep monitoring the outputs of our activities, i.e. the quality of students who completed our schools. And while doing this, we have established the, uh, the professional companies as well. And they are incorporated into our program. The knowledge about the development uh, should be included, and by taking this kind of a hybrid method, uh, we can incorporate that knowledge as well. Even though it's not yet uh, ideal, but uh, uh, still we have to work on the fact that uh, we have to develop uh, people to be able to be employed. The most effective part uh, of this uh, education program is that uh, turning into full-time education courses. It is very important to have a full-time rather than part-time. And the continuation rate improve and uh, affected the employment rate. And uh, we gradually improve the contents of education. But it is very important that uh, this should be at the highest priority of the life of uh, the students and ourselves. Now, this is the activities in Japan. 80% of the uh, people complete this educational course. And then we want to challenge uh, the value of the education is uh, value of the people. So uh, we decided to venture into Africa. Uh, since uh, two years ago, I started alone. I went to Rwanda, uh, but I wanted to create a system to disseminate education program across Africa. I went to Africa two years ago and started with 20, 30 students. And then we translated the textbooks and the online education. Uh, three people graduated. And uh, we started uh, this uh, project and uh, we asked for cloud funding. And this year, and now we have uh, 20 students in Africa.
uh, learning uh, full time. They are going to graduate from this uh, program uh, development uh, education. They are going to be employed after the graduation. It is very important uh, to employ younger generation in Africa. Therefore, education should be combined with the creation of employment opportunities. These are the students. And uh, please uh, take a look at uh, the faces. Uh, these are the uh, students in Rwanda. They are studying right now. The dissemination of the internet is uh, tremendous in Africa. And the internet is going to be available oh, in 50% of the primary uh, school, um, all of the primary school in Rwanda, and 50% uh, of the population would get access to internet. And they have a notebook PC, and uh, you can use uh, Google. Uh, using the Google translation, uh, the one Japanese uh, teacher even without the knowledge of English, I was able to help other students in Rwanda to complete the study and they graduated from the program of development education program. And this is a roadmap of the uh, education program. And the next month, uh, they are going to have the practical training it is very important to look back upon the experiences and we take the overall master schedule and the time schedule and the uh, promotion of the, uh, the pairing of the students and the setting the mindsets. Uh, this is the online education system, DIVA. It is uh, international in English. And then we modify. Uh, this uh, system uh, from time to time and uh, uh, we have uh, we have been trying to develop uh, on the lecturer robot so without the human intervention without the human evaluation uh, this will be uh, the evaluated by the robots, but uh, human instructors uh, will uh, spend more time on the evaluation, which can be done only by human teachers. And this is the uh, ABE initiative to invite, uh, for instance, uh, 1,000 or 5,000 students from Africa to Japan. And we would like to cooperate with other uh, governments in Africa uh, to implement uh, this uh, joint program to receive uh, trainees uh, from Africa. In summary, we'd like to expand opportunity uh, globally so that uh, people can learn Ruby programming. And uh, they learn uh, the programming uh, using Ruby, and uh, they would uh, realize their dreams and high quality motivated uh, education uh, should be provided to them. Now that uh, the, we would like to continue our activity uh, to challenge and the difficulty of employment opportunity in Africa. Uh, they can graduate from the Ruby programming education uh, program and uh, we would like to be continually uh, support them. The Ruby existed to realize the people's dreams. I encountered the Ruby and I was able to realize my dream thanks to the students and the graduates and the people in the world. And uh, people also would like to realize their own dreams. And in order to realize their dreams and hopes, uh, I would like to continue to create opportunity for people in the world. Murakoze uh, chane means uh, thank you very much in the language of Rwanda. The IT education would, would open to the world. 
and I hope that uh, in the Ruby is going to be this kind of uh, the opportunity and the those uh, Rwandan students who graduate from this education program will develop the prototype of a web application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Noro. We would like to take a questions from the floor. Any questions? I thank you very much for your lecture. Thank you. My question is as follows. Recently, uh, quite recently, a bit uh, politically, and there was the issue of the privately offered uh, examination of uh, English, but it is cancelled because of the uh, remark of the Minister of Education. And even the poor people can learn within the limit of their financial means. That is a remark done by that uh, minister. What about the education of IT? What do you think of the educational opportunity within the limit of the financial capacity, even for the poor people? Uh, well, this is the, the first time I received this kind of question myself. But uh, I believe in the uh, infinite uh, potential of uh, people because my elder brother and my father are handicapped. I have grown up in this kind of a family situation, and I learned that uh, human has uh, infinite uh, potential, even with uh, disabilities, with or without the disabilities, uh, people have infinite uh, potential. So anybody should be able to challenge. And uh, uh, I really hope that uh, there should be some space for everybody to uh, challenge and their hopes and the potential. The person in the front, microphone please. Thank you so much. That was really interesting. Um, and you've come on such a great journey with Dive Into Code. Um, you spoke about some of the challenges going into Rwanda um, as, as a market and how it's quite different from Japan. Um, was there anything that you had to fundamentally change in how you kind of moved forward um, in Rwanda to that was unexpected or not what you wanted to do initially on kind of thinking about your expansion of Dive Into Code? Thank you very much. Um, for our audience, um, in Japanese to answer, I'm so sorry. So this name. Well, the biggest change is that uh, Rwanda students, the learning opportunity uh, is uh, quite new and uh, they were appreciative of having that uh, learning opportunities in Rwanda, that kind of change is uh, the biggest. When we offered this uh, learning opportunity, actually some of the students uh, didn't understand why they are learning. For instance, I set their minds every day. You capture your own uh, opportunity, you can do it, and anything is uh, possible. I talk to them, and uh, through this uh, process, they learn that there is uh, potential and the opportunity is given, like in the case of uh, Japan, and uh, they would be able to be employed in the future. So they started to uh, believe in the potential in the future. So they trusted us, and uh, they uh, started to realize that the education would lead to the future. And that is a change that had occurred uh, from the initial stage. The difficulty I encountered it, uh, particularly in Rwanda and Africa, internet is available, but actually the connection is not so good. For instance, uh, uh, 
on the first day we did the uh, uh, establishment of the environment telecommunication uh, environment but it took uh, one and a half days uh, to create a virtual environment therefore internet connection technically was uh, quite uh, difficult and uh, much slower than I had expected uh, for the regular work it's okay but uh, it took so long to install and and uh, most of the personal computers that the students use uh, half are broken. They use uh, Windows, a PC, a laptop, and uh, used uh, personal computers, which would cost about 20,000, 30,000 yen. Nobody had a Mac, but uh, still they come to the school and they will learn from each other. I think uh, that was the difficulty we encountered. Thank you. Now it's time. Uh, if you have any further questions, uh, please uh, ask him uh, individually, exchanging business cards. So extracting uh, the potential of the people and continue to uh, give uh, education to them. So in the future, uh, I hope that uh, uh, some Rwandan developer will come to the Ruby World Conference as a speaker. And the dream will be realized, I believe. And uh, I continue to dream. Murakoze Chane, meaning thank you very much in Rwandan.